Welcome and thank you for your interest in PenSoft Payroll, the next generation. This demonstration is an introduction to the 2016 PenSoft Payroll. The development cycle for this new generation of software began in 2010. In December of last year, the next generation of PenSoft Payroll was introduced as a limited release to a select group of PenSoft customers. All customers renewing for 2016 and all new customers for 2015 will receive this next generation of PenSoft Payroll. The addition of PenSoft used to demonstrate the features is a Premier Edition. The Premier Edition replaces the Accounting Edition. We encourage you to go to the website and download a trial of the version for evaluation. The trial download is a new generation of PenSoft Payroll and we'll get started. The layout of the software is new. You will notice the appearance of a consolidated dashboard with functionality broken in task groups. It provides for easier navigation to accessing payroll function within the software. The system setup functions is located in the system tray at the top right hand corner. The groups listed and list items are specific to the subscription edition, but program, common setup, electronic data transfer, and users and roles are available in all editions. Direct deposit originator would only be available in those editions that offer direct deposit, and invoicing setup is available in the Premier Edition. Users and Roles is a new feature and provides the ability to set up limitations to the function access at the system and individual company levels. You can manage roles. There's an administrator role and you can set up various other roles based on your company's specific needs. There is also the ability to manage users. It comes defaulting with a manager user as administrator and you can add users as necessary. Going to the company setup, if I click company and company setup, a highlight in the software is the consolidated dashboard view of all setup areas at the company level that are accessible with a single click. We're going to take a quick tour around the company setup area uh, within the basic groups. The basic setup is new as locations and locations is used for EEO1 and VETS100 reports and can be used as one of the breakout criteria in department and job costing reports. So if you have multiple locations you can simply add those locations here. It defaults with a headquarters location. You can see I have headquarters. I've added a PenSoft location and there is no limit to the number of locations that you can have. Here when you look at the setup, you have the ability to also include identification numbers for the NAICS, DUNS, and the VETS 100 number. Down below you also have EEO data information that you can enter to include on the report. Under the basic setup options, options area of the software provides users with the ability to set the desired behaviors within the software. You can show the events calendar when the company is open. You can prompt for backups when the company is closed, which is a best practice to ensure you have the most current backup of all data. You can also use pay grades and steps for employees which is very uh, beneficial. You can also designate the actions when a new employee is hired, new person is added, or terminated. Down below you will see the option to disable the post button for all reports. For our clients that use remote client, you can go into companies individually and disable the post button which would prevent any information or reports being posted to PenSoft Remote Client. The advantage of disabling those companies that you will not be using with PenSoft Remote Client is it prevents the accidental posting and billing for services you do not intend to use.
you can close out. We're going to go to the advanced setup next. The advanced setup, many of the features are controlled by the subscription edition, but supervisors is available in all editions. This allows our users to establish supervisors that can be assigned to employees and recipients as necessary and provide a reporting capability under who the supervisors the employees report to. Also, we have the payroll setup, and a new feature is the pay grades and steps. This gives you the ability to set up pay grades and steps. You can see I have software engineer level one, level two, and this once again allows you to customize and streamline your payroll function within the program. We are also excited to announce that under the deductions, we have doubled the number of deductions and tax categories within each company to over 500. Also, users can customize deductions to a little more granular level. If I add a new deduction here under medical, you will notice many of the setup features are what you're used to seeing. You can select paid by employee or company. You can establish a deposit type. Options include marking them as dependent care, whether it's a local tax, if it should be reported in the box 14 of the W-2. Also, we have a default setup. New under the default setup is the include option defaults to every payday, but if this deduction is only to be deducted, say the first scheduled payday of the month, the last scheduled payday month, or one of the weeks in between, you can designate this. So I'm going to select the last payday of the month for this extra medical deduction. As you're used to seeing, the item can be a, uh, set up to be exempt from various following items. You would just simply put a check mark in the boxes that are relevant to this type of deduction you're setting up. So I am going to mark this item as being exempt from all of these categories and click OK. Now, one nice feature also is if you are using an abbreviation uh, that is already in use, you will be warned, as you just noted here. So I'm going to change this to Med uh, 2 so that there is differentiation between the two types of deduction, and it will though not be confusing. So I have selected and created this deduction. Also, we're very excited to let you know that you no longer will need to delete incomes, taxes, or deductions if you do not want them in your list. We have included the ability to hide a deduction. I have a deduction here, medical, that I just created, and I've decided that I do not want to have the cafeteria plan in my list. I wanted to utilize the customized deduction that I created. I highlight the cafeteria plan and select hide. Upon doing that, you'll see that it has been removed from my list. If at a later date I need to use that category, all I have to do is select the option to show hidden deductions highlight the deduction that I'd like to have present in my list, select unhide, and it is now returned back to my list. The advantage is there's no need to delete incomes, taxes, or deductions and run the risk of deleting a category that may have additional source code behind it that would be lost if it were to be deleted. We're going to look at the personnel setup now. A new feature availability is limited by your subscription, but many are in the professional edition and higher. Employee management features, as in the evaluation ratings, benefit plans, new hire, and termination checklist. These are very useful tools uh, if you have the edition that supports these categories. 
evaluation ratings, we provide you with three ratings to start with, but your company may have a specific rating system available for evaluations, and you can add those. Very simple. Left-hand side, select Add. Put in the category ratings. I'm going to, if you have a numerical system, um, you can do that. Just going to do a very quick one here. Whoops. So my fingers would work. Click OK. Close. And now the custom evaluation rating is in the list. Also, you have the ability to add training courses here at Pensoft. Our certified payroll professionals are required to maintain 120 recertification credit hours, so we do track that, and this gives us the ability to monitor that and produce reports to make sure that our payroll professionals, or CPPs as we refer to them as, do not lapse in their certification. I'll close this. Benefit plans, you can enter in benefit plan information. This has been one of the items that many of our customers this year who were given the limited release have expressed much excitement about the ability to set up the benefit plans. So, um, if I say have a vision plan, type of plan it is, cafeteria, retirement, other, you can establish that. You can mark if it includes medical, this plan does not. You can put in the plan number. You can put in a group number. You can establish eligibility. By default, employees are not eligible, eligible, eligible after. So there are several options here that provide flexibility. I'm going to select they're eligible after 90 days. And by default, dependents are eligible. Deductions, you can establish the deductions that are associated with the employee portion of your plan, as well as the company portion of the plan by merely just clicking on the drop-down list and those company matches or those company deductions in the list will populate, making it very streamlined to categorize and identify those deductions. You can also include the carrier, called Optima Vision, include address information, contact information of who you would have to speak to. telephone number and email. And one feature I like here is the ability to uh, include an email address and right from the screen send that individual an email. Simply type in a subject. You can then type in your email, whatever it is you need to tell them, and click send and the email goes. But you're still in Pinsoft payroll, so that is a very convenient option. Also you can set enrollment, have a list of employees names, you can establish eligibility, uh, whether or not they've been enrolled, date of enrollment, the employee rate, the company rate, extreme flexibility in this area. We also provide a new hire checklist. This new hire checklist comes with a Listing, default listing of standard tasks performed when hiring new employees. And you can modify this. You can add your own categories or tasks. It's very helpful when you're hiring new employees to have this checklist and ensure that you've completed all the tasks necessary based on your company's requirements. We also have a termination checklist and many times this is helpful in ensuring that you have completed all the tasks and make sure that upon leaving the employee has everything that they need to have uh, before exiting the organization. This can include returning company assets like keys, computers, cell phones. Uh, you can be general or you can be specific. 
Uh, you see a category here, return company assets, but down at the bottom you can see where we've where I've listed return keys. Also, you can break down update security and computer systems, which is very important to make sure that if they have passwords or access, especially if they have access from home, if someone has left your organization uh, voluntarily or uh, not voluntarily, you want to make sure their access to your sensitive information is terminated. So you can add that to the list order as well. Also, we have form preparation. It's consolidated. The signatory, third-party designee, and the form preparer can all be set up from the screen here. Your deposit setup is broken down between deposit types of tax, deduction, recipient, or 1099, and EFTPS setup uh, for those companies using EFTPS. You'll see the Form 1099 setup is available from this, this window dashboard. You can also, if you have departments and job costing in your subscription, can establish those from here. Another really nice feature is the find feature. Uh, many times I will be in a hurry when I'm looking for an item and I will just gloss right over it. The find feature gives you the capability of identifying where on this screen an item may be. So, give you an example, if I am looking for uh, let's say compensations. I'm going to start typing compensations. Each letter I type, you'll see a red border around those options that contain these characters that I'm typing. But as I get a little more specific and I get to compensation, you'll see there are only four category types that would contain this information and streamlines and focuses my attention to those items. You'll notice this throughout the software, uh, which can be a very time-saving feature if for some reason you're not quite sure where an item is located. Another feature that is new to the product is cloning. Now, cloning a company streamlines the process of setting up a new company with many of the same settings as an existing company, and we have provided the ability to do this uh, many times clients would call and say, I want to set up a sample company, uh, uh, another company with the exact same deductions and incomes and everything, but new employees. And in the past, they would have to literally recreate the companies. Well, we've streamlined this process with Clone a Company. So I have a second location or a second company that I want to establish payroll for and I want it to be based on the same setup as Insider Secrets. So I'm going to create a company called Demonstration uh, Group. Oops. Once again, it'd help if my fingers would work. I'll click Next. It establishes a file name. Click Next. It tells me it already exists. So if one already exists, you cannot do that, so I am going to change the name here. Uh, well, that's not a good name. We'll go to Demo. Click Next, and one of the options is to retain the setup of all departments, locations, job codes, classes, and categories. For, this for the purpose of this demonstration, I will leave the checkbox. And now I have another company in my list. It's called Demonstration Group and it has the similar setup as Insider Secrets. Very convenient if you are in the process of um, setting up a second company within your organization. Now I also uh, have it set up to do a backup at the close of each company and you will see that I just did that. It uh, reminded me to do a backup of my demonstration group to which I did complete the task and it gave me a report that my backup was successful. Uh, we'll talk about that again, again a little later in the demonstration. I'd like to demonstrate and talk about a feature in the product. Uh, it's listed as cal calendar. It's an events listing and it provides our users with the ability to create events 
that either appear in a list format or in a month view. While the terminology calendar is used in the event title, it does not integrate with external calendars such as Outlook calendars or Google calendars. Also, it's, it's, it's very functional, but it is limited. It, you cannot establish permissions as saying, an example would be, I would want Joe to have access to seeing this on the calendar, but I don't want Sue to have access. It's an all or nothing. If they have access within the company, they have access to the calendar, the events calendar. And to demonstrate how this uh, events calendar works, you'll see here I have uh, it in list view. Now, that's my favorite view, personally. I like a list. And it shows that I am overdue for filing my Virginia FC 20, which is my quarterly report. If I have completed this, I can mark it as cleared, or I can just clear it off the calendar. When I go to setup, uh, some of the functionality that you have here is you can include items in the list view that are due in the next 31 days. I have 31 days. But you can control how far out uh, events are due that can be in this list, so whatever best meets your specific needs. I kind of I kind of like I'm going to add 60 days here. Well, 90 days just so you you can see the implications of going out a considerable amount of time. And the information that's going to populate is really going to be based on how many events you add to the uh, calendar. But some of the information that you can include are notes that require company notes or personnel notes that require follow-up actions, personnel data, if you have someone on probation, suspension, or if you want to acknowledge birthdays, anniversaries, a reminder when evaluations are due, expiring training, which we do here use quite a bit, and benefit eligibility. Also, you can include scheduled payrolls, federal tax deposits due, and state tax deposits due. So, and one thing that you can do is create your own setup here. So if I have a calendar event item that I want to include here, we celebrate National, oops, National Payroll Week. It's an APA event. I'm going to list follow-up action required. This event occurs in September. So I want a follow-up event on the 24th to make sure that we have properly planned for this. And this is a series items. You can select weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, quarterly. This is a single instance for this case. I'm going to select OK. So now that is an event, a custom event that can be added in my list. You can also select the option to show completed items or even uh, go through and customize the event listing uh, every year. You can add, modify, delete. Click OK here. And now I'm going to show you what the month view looks like so you can understand uh, what you would get if you selected this option. Here you'll see several day on several days of the calendar. It says one item. And there's no detail other than it is one item, but if you hover over, it will tell you specifically what the items are. So if I had multiple items, there would be multiple listings here, but Johnny Appleseed's birthday is May 8th. Uh, if I come down here on the 21st, Molly S. Muffet is employment anniversary. So once again, you it can provide you a listing of events that are coming up, and you can advance the calendar. <coughs> Excuse me, two items. We have the Federal 941 due on the second quarter, and I also have a state Virginia FC 20 due uh, in July. So, very handy events listing that provides you uh, with an up to date uh, calendar or list view of what needs to be done or what's coming up in the company.
We're going to look at the personnel area now. And something nice that we want to make sure that we share with you is we've expanded the capability to include tracking applicants. We like to say here uh, automatic tracking of personnel from the receipt of the application to hiring through retiring. You'll see you have applicants, employees, and recipients, whether they be 1099 miscellaneous, dividend, interest, or 1099R. You also have the listing of terminated and inactive, and you can establish a default personnel setup that can streamline entering in new personnel. We're going to start with the applicant. Uh, I have Johnny Appleseed here. We're going to look at Johnny Appleseed's application. It provides you with the ability to do a basic setup, which includes uh, general information. You can also load a photograph if that is your company policy. Say you, you take a photograph of your applicants and you want to include them in. I'm going to select my photo here, add it to Johnny Appleseed, so now you have a photo associated with the applicant. You also have the suffix you can add if the suffix is on the Social Security card, Social Security number. So I'm going to add a, a fake Social Security number here. Establish an employee number. And if I had established permissions, I could select the permissions classification A, B, C, or D, and we can talk about those uh, later in the demonstration. You'll notice here there's a notepad uh, that gives you access to notes. It's under, I was under the identification area, so it's categorizing it under identification, but you can select uh, a different category to add this note to. So I've got categories, uh, identification, uh, potential candidate. I'm going to say great personality friendly. If a follow-up action is required, I can mark this and set a calendar date of when follow-up is supposed to be completed. And once the, once the follow-up is being completed, you can also flag this and put the date in which it was completed. Once again, it provides a robust, complete uh, event history of your applicant. You have personnel data where you can fill in additional information including birth date, uh, marital status, emergency contacts, email addresses, phone numbers, mobile phone. Uh, once again, within the applicant, there's the ability to send an email right from that screen. You don't even have to get out. Once you set up your um, email parameter within the software, you can send emails right from here, making it very convenient. You have events, if they're uh, everything that you do within an applicant, an event. I have an application has been received, a position has been applied for, a program engineer. You can show the history, uh, which is, you know, only show current. You can show current, you should show history. You can go to notes once again and, and view the employment notes if there were employment notes or select a different category. Uh, you can also produce a report if you need a report of the current employment status. You, you can tell where they're at in the application process. You can also include or set up the dependent information for an applicant. If this is information on your application, there's the ability to include education. Uh, which is really, really nice because you can put in the school, when they started, ended, whether or not they graduated and received a diploma or degree, when it was awarded on. Again, you'll see, notice that there is a note, cap a note option here that you can take 
advantage of to put additional notes about education. Uh, you also can run a report uh, that will provide your education information, the status of the applicant, and uh, attach that into a file. You have the ability to record training. If they're a CPP, say, Certified Payroll Professional, uh, they started when they started the cost you can establish what the certification or course would cost and if there is uh, a completion date as well as an expiration date so you have a very um, robust option here under applicants you can include references and also you can uh, designate when the reference was contacted whether or whether they were contacted and the date in which they were contacted you can also determine between professional and personal references and all this information is saved within the database previous employers miscellaneous now miscellaneous is you know sometimes discounted as oh, it's just miscellaneous but one really nice feature that we're excited about is the ability to include attachments so I have Johnny Appleseed here and you can see that I have a resume I can display that resume from within whoops Pensoft payroll if it can locate it so I'm going to view or modify I'm going to add a desktop I'm going to include the resume and say Johnny Appleseed resume 2 so I have that event listed here and I can display that resume right on the screen from within the application. Uh, this message is actually from Adobe because the document was a PDF that was provided. You can attach Word documents, you can attach Excel spreadsheets. So if you have other types of documents, say child support order, all those type of documents can be attached and associated with the individual. Uh, great feature. Once again, you'll see the find uh, option here. You'll notice Johnny Appleseed has a little uh, diagram of a person here. But if you hover over that symbol, that icon, the actual photograph will appear. So while it doesn't show here, you can hover over and see what photograph is associated with the applicant. So let's say Johnny Appleseed was the perfect candidate and you are now ready to hire. You, there's no need for you to re-enter data that you already have in the system. So you have a list of applicants, Johnny's the one you want to hire. All you have to do is come here and say, hire as an, select hire as an employee the social security number and will populate if it was in the applicant setup it establishes an employee number you enter in hiring details I have I'm hiring today work starts today I'm hiring him as a permanent employee full-time but there are other options as you can see on the screen it can be a temporary intern part-time or hire on probation click next if I want to enter in a job title uh, this is where I would enter in a job title I'm going to make Johnny a program engineer I'm going to drop down and Jack and Jill Jack A. Hill is the supervisor and the location will be Pensoft so I'm here and I can now select the option for a welcome letter I want to send Mr. Appleseed a welcome letter so we have given you the capability of establishing and formulating a welcome letter right from within Pensoft Payroll. So it provides the information, it takes the information that's already in the database and populates the letter. But at any point within the letter, you can make a change. Your compensation will be, so we're going to pay Johnny Appleseed $52,000 um, annually so 
I've got that in there. Congratulations and welcome to the family. It has the supervisor's signature. And the nice thing about this is from this point, you are in Word and you have all the features and functionality within Word. So I'm going to run spell check and make the necessary corrections and save my letter. I can print it. I can send it if I want to send the issue. If I want to send it as an email from here, uh, send using email. Any option that you have in Word is now available for this letter. I'm going to exit out here of Word. I'm not going to save those changes. And I'm going to finish. So now you'll see that Johnny Appleseed is no longer listed under my applicants list. And that's because I have hired Johnny as an employee and now Mr. Appleseed is listed under my employee section. From here I can do a variety of functions. We're going to talk about uh, the ability to look at many of the new functions under the employee setup. Uh, once you get to the employee setup, you can expand the setup option and you have a robust list of functionality available here. So if you did not complete the applicant section fully and you have additional information, you can come back here and add that additional information. You'll notice I can hover over uh, the icons here and determine that Johnny Appleseed is a full-time employee. And once again, that photograph that we established with Johnny Appleseed, once I hover over the icon, uh, pops up. And we have the ability now to add additional information within the employee setup. Also new to the program is the ability to view pay history. And this is very nice feature because it gives you the ability to see the history over the years uh, as employees are given raises, given bonuses. You can record all of these events and then have a report. You can run a report on it, which is, which is really nice and very, very convenient. You also have the ability to establish the leave. Once again, this consolidated dashboard makes it very easy to access everything within one click. You can see management information, references, evaluations, other items that the benefit plans, notes, attachments, and assets. So let's say Johnny Appleseed, we're going to give uh, Johnny a laptop so you can establish what of the control number is of the item. You can say it's a new new laptop and this item was checked out. We're going to do June 1st and anytime it's checked in you, you can demonstrate when it was turned in. Say, say the laptop uh, got dropped on a business trip and needs to be replaced. You can then record that that laptop was re returned in and another one was checked out. You can run reports on these assets and keep uh, track of all assets and what the employees actually have in their possession. So now I'm going to close this out. Very quickly, I, th I think most of the functionality here is very similar to what you are currently using in Pensoff Payroll. You can add information about recipients and have information in your records and process 1099 miscellaneous payments and right from the window you no longer have to toggle between the 1099 section of the program and the payroll section of the program. So I'm going to do this really quick. Uh, contract title, landscape, oops. And if there's an account number, you can put the account number. Next, job title. Uh, this is the super. Uh, if there's a supervisor that they have to answer to or communicate with, uh, that would uh, be the person that they notify when they've completed a contract. 
you can select that. You can also send a welcome letter if you want to let them know that they've received the bid for doing a particular uh, job here. Now, if you have an employee, you've got a new hire checklist. I mentioned this briefly. And this is an opportunity for you when you're hiring or if you are hiring an independent contractor, if there's certain protocols in place, like you need to validate that you've received their workers' compensation insurance uh, listing before they can start the job. So all those items can be listed here. So even though it says new hire checklist, this can also be utilized for recipients and can be very, very handy in cases where you want to validate you've got a W-9 on file, you also have their workers' compensation insurance, uh, anything else that you would want, say you require a business license, a copy of their business license to validate that you know they have a business license and it's current. Uh, you can attach that information to the contractor's records. So all of that functionality is, is right here. You'll notice attachments. I can add an attachment. I mentioned having a copy of the individual's insurance. So we're going to pretend one of these documents is actually an insurance document. Uh, well, actually, let's do uh, the fingerprint card. Uh, as a category. So I'm going to say fingerprint card. Uh, my center description. I've entered in my description and I can display this card here. So uh, I am now in Adobe. This is outside of Pensoft, so all of those notices that you just saw were related to Adobe and not Pensoft. But here you can see I've got a fingerprint card. I can pull it up. I can look at it. it you know, whatever your company's policy is, you can now establish the ability to have attachments. Uh, within the database and it, very very handy no longer having to dig through file folders uh, to get access to information it's all right here within the program also uh, terminate and inactivate uh, this if I have this individual they've completed their contract and I am ready now to say all right we're not going to have a relationship with this individual anymore. Uh, this is where you would come in then and establish that the individual is no longer uh, performing a duty for you. And in doing so, what that does is gives you the, the option to then take them out of the list. So. That is a uh, very important option. So we've got George Jones here. We're going to terminate. You're terminating the contract. The contract has come to an end. It's terminated. Doesn't necessarily mean that um, you have uh, an employee event here. So you can say contract ended. Uh, are they eligible for rehire? You know, if this vendor is, if you have a good relationship with this vendor, then you could simply say, yes, I would use this contractor again. And they have now been removed from the current active recipients listing. From there, uh, say six months later, you've decided you need additional landscape project done, you can come to the terminated slash inactive uh, group. Uh, personnel is a general category for applicants, employees, and recipients. You can highlight the individual and you can reassign them as an applicant. Um, say this gentleman was uh, superior and you decided you wanted a full-time uh, landscaper that as an employee you can rehire him as an employee or if they're still an independent contractor and it's on a contract basis uh, it's very straightforward. You can rehire as a uh, 1099 recipient. 
So, but in this case, I'm going to categorize and select rehire as an employee. I've now decided that I want this individual as a full-time employee in my company. So, if you remember, the individual had a federal ID number, so for an employee, I need a social security number, so I'm going to enter in uh, some information here and click finish. They have now been removed from my terminated inactive list. And when I go to employees, you will see that George Jones, who previously was an independent contractor, has now been brought on board full time as an employee. Once again, very streamlined, not having to re enter in data a second time. It's all within the software. We're going to look at processing payroll. One of the new features in Pensoft Payroll is the ability to, to establish a schedule. A payroll schedule wizard. Select the schedule option and you have the wizard pop-up and provides the ability to set up customized pay date schedule. Holidays and weekends can be flagged for easy modifications. Pensoft will make no logical decisions of your pay frequency if a pay period falls on a holiday or a weekend. They'll be flagged and then you can adjust whether you pay the day before the weekend or before the holiday or the Monday after. Whatever your company policy is, you can establish that. So I'm going to set up payroll frequency of semi-monthly. Uh, select next. The first pay date in each month will be the 10th of the month and the second pay date is the 25th and you select the number of days between the end of the work period and the pay date. I have select the offset of five days. I'm going to select finish and it notifies me that some of my pay days have fallen on a weekend or a holiday. They've been marked with a flag and I will have to manually adjust them based on my company's policy. So my first pay period uh, work period in between is December 21st of last year to January 5th of this year but the pay date is in 2015 and that's why it is populated. So I'm going to highlight that and modify. Once again in red it designates that the pay date is actually on a Saturday so we're going to change that pay date. While the start and end date doesn't need to change the date in which I pay the individuals due. So I'm going to I can come in here very easily and modify this. So uh, some companies will if it falls on a Saturday, they get paid on the Friday before. If it falls on a Sunday, they may get paid on Monday. You know, select uh, whatever your company policy is uh, for circumstances, events in this category, and make those necessary changes. Now, once you do this, your calendar is set. It is in the system. And all you have to do now is uh, utilize your listing to make sure that you stay on top of your payrolls. But the beauty of it is you're now, once you set this up, you're not going to be setting up the ending dates and the beginning and ending dates. So you'll see here the first pay date, I, next pay date I have coming up is June 10th. On the calendar, my default work week is already established. I click OK and I'm ready now to go in and process payroll. You can change the pay dates if necessary. Uh, that is one of the abilities you have by simply selecting change dates here. You can make what necessary changes uh, based on your company's needs. Also, you have the option here to write on the front screen to disable deductions disable direct deposit or disable leave. Many times companies will do commission checks or bonus checks and they do not want deductions taken out of uh, this particular pay run. So you're temporarily suspending uh, these functions uh, for off-cycle payrolls. Uh, you can also import payroll data from a compatible XML file following the XML schema. So you do have the capability of importing payroll data. We do want to let you know that that functionality was not taken out of the software at all. 
I'm going to now leave this area and demonstrate the check area. We've added some new features here and one of the options is the ability to generate a non-negotiable check for payments of zero and negative value. If you have a direct deposit check or a check that ends up with a zero value but you still want to print it on say a check stock format, this gives you the ability to market as non-negotiable. Occasionally employees may not pay attention to the fact that it is a summary statement, take it to the bank, and if the bank were to cash it then that could be problematic for the company and it's, it's a hassle for the employee as well. And to do that, you know, when you go into your account setup, one of the options that you have is the ability to generate a check even if the amounts are zero in value, so I'm going to select those options. And then when I come here, one of the options under the check options is mark zero and negative amounts as not negotiable. And this can reduce the probability of a non-negotiable uh, payment if you print on actual check stock, which some companies do, of someone not going to the bank and accidentally cashing the check. We've also added another capability that has been high on the wish list of many of our customers, and that is the ability to print void after on Micker checks. And this functionality is available under the check editor. And the check editor is available under the system tray. Uh, top right hand corner, you would select setup and go to edit check style. So I have a check format here and I'm going to modify. And in doing so, if I select my standard check block and modify it, one of the options in my list is the available to put a label void after 60 days, 90 days, or 120. And on the screen you can see I've selected a void after 120 days. Okay, let's say the company's changed its mind. I'm going to delete that option and now we're going to put void after 60 days. So it's a drag and drop. I can add that item anywhere on the check that I desire. Uh, just know that that's exactly where it's going to print. Click OK and in the future when I use that check style that information will be printed on my check. So no more having to have checks pre-printed with void after 60, 90, or 120 days. I'm going to demonstrate features in the report area now. The report area has been expanded considerably. So there are easy access to all reports from the top of the toolbar. A top left hand corner you'll notice that there's payroll reports 1099 reports, personnel reports, documents, others. So right here all at the top you have easy access. So if you need to print payroll reports you would select payroll reports and from here you would select your category and under each of those categories will be the various types of reports. Now if we expanded uh, reporting capability with an unlimited number of user definable reports for companies to set up custom reports specific to their reporting needs and we're, we are very happy to be able to let companies know that now for your user definable reports there is no limit to the number of reports, user definable reports that you can create. And this is uh, should be good news for most organizations if you click the setup link by the details you can include mark the items of information that you want to include and new is the ability to include company paid taxes and company paid deductions and this is this is great news so now that information can be included on the report there is unlimited number of retirement reports that you can create Many companies have different reports either for different managers 
or maybe their plan administrator wants a layout, specific layouts per, for specific events. Uh, we also have personnel reports. Uh, personnel reports includes new hire, management, government forms, uh, W-4, the I-9, the VETS 100. Beauty of all of this is when you select these reports, you can print them out. But one of the reports that can be very handy is if an employee comes and requests the ability to complete a new W-4. Say there's been a life event change and they need to modify their W-4. You can generate a W-4. Say Johnny Appleseed needs to complete a new W-4. You'll see that the federal form is within the software here. And generating this, it will populate the basic information in the setup, the name, the address, and all Mr. Appleseed has to do is complete the items of change. Uh, that includes the marital status or the filing status and the number of allowances and any additional amount and return that back to you and it's clean, concise, and easy to follow. No need to interpret or re -challenge, be challenged with the penmanship of the individual. Uh, also to document templates are formatted text documents with tags embedded at specific locations. When the final document is generated, the tags are replaced with data from, from the selected applicant. Uh, these are always very convenient templates. Uh, let's select here the anniversary letter. You send out anniversary letters. You can display, we have an anniversary letter for Mr. Hill. The various tags within the individual's setup are populated and from here you can enter in additional information or text in your letter. You'll notice that Mr. Hill doesn't have an address, city, or zip uh, within his setup, so of course they are left with just the tag information. But again, this provides flexibility and convenience from within the program. So I'll exit out of this. I don't want to save it. Uh, this is a new uh, feature within the software. Uh, as we talked before, uh, other reports, this is av currently available, but you have system reports providing a company list, and then you have company-specific reports. We support report stacks and report sets. These are available in the standard professional enterprise platinum and premier editions. So your light edition, which is designed for a single company, uh, would not have this functionality in it. And anytime if you go to the help file and you search on an item and you say, well, gee, I don't see this in my software, if you look in the top right hand corner, it should provide you with the products in which this functionality or feature is available in. And we're, we're getting close to ending this demonstration, but before I close, I would like to show you the utility section. Uh, streamline the backup process with the option to backup into companies individually or multiple companies in a single backup file. So this allows you to, to provide a single file with all your companies or each, each company individually. And I'll demonstrate this. I'm, I will select all. I will select next. It lists multiple companies. You can see that there are three companies here. The backup file name has the name as well as the date embedded in the file, and I select OK, I get a backup log, a data backup log. And this is, this is a good uh, document to have if your company has strict procedures of backup to ensure that you have data recovery in the event of a disaster or you have a DR plan that requires payroll to be backed up. Uh, you can demonstrate that your backup was completed and it was successful and the companies that were backed up. Uh, 
restoring data, uh, very similar to what you're used to here. If you have a multiple company backup, as you can see here, this is the multiple company backup. It provides the ability to select that file and then individually restore each of the companies in that list. You can also check for updates within the product, the latest version. I am on the version 10. The latest version on the website is version 8 and it also provides you a release date that the product was uh, posted for download. It tells me no additional action is required. This is a great option to make sure that you have selected in your setup because it ensures that your product is up to date and current. So the next generation of Pensoft Payroll is available for downloading and you can access this through the trial edition from our website. We encourage you to install the trial to experience firsthand the upgrades and streamlined structure of the next generation of Pensoft Payroll. In the near future, we will post on-demand videos available demonstrating in-depth features of Pensoft Payroll. Information as to the availability of these seminars will be published through all communication channels of Pensoft. This concludes today's demonstration and we want to thank you for your time and interest in Pensoft Payroll. If you should have questions about purchasing or renewing Pensoft Payroll, the Sales and Administration team is available Monday through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Fridays until 5 p.m. to assist. You can also reach our sales department uh, by email info at pensoft.com. You can also gain access to information how to reach Pensoft from clicking on the About button in the system tray. It will provide you the telephone number uh, that you can reach support as well as our address and information about your product software. This concludes the demonstration and thank you.